Hello again, and welcome back to the Shadow Gallery. I'll be your host again, James Donnelly. And, well, it's now Thursday morning, early. It's uh, 2.46 in the a.m. Um, what you're probably expecting right now is me to do my weekly new comics section. Or segment. It's a segment, yeah. Um, but I can't. Uh, because I couldn't pick up my comics today. Uh, because uh, here in Chandler, Arizona, you may have seen it on your local news, um, there was a gunfight uh, at the mall where I have my pull box. Uh, it's sort of a gunfight. And it wasn't really in the mall itself, but it happened in what they call the Chandler Fashion Center, which expands uh, to uh, kind of a strip mall across the street. Anyway, it's a long story um, and kind of an anticlimactic one. But yeah, I couldn't pick up my comics today. So I figured that, hey, I'd at least talk about comics. And I'm going to talk about one person in particular tonight. Now, there are, for my money, two people right now that are working in comics that I will pick up anything by. Anything. And that's saying a lot because in this day and age you almost can't trust anybody. You know, uh, Frank Miller you know, flakes out and he, you know, does the spirit and, you know, totally, you know, fucks his filmmaking career and uh, and, you know, Alan Moore, he's just, you know, he's brilliant, but he's too undependable as far as a, uh, uh, you know, as far as an actual author is concerned, because he's, you know, it takes him 10 years to come out with a new project. And, uh, well, you know, Bendis, like I said, you know, like I said before, very entertaining. Uh, Mark Millar... You know, a lot of hits and a couple of really big misses. Um, Garth Ennis, uh, hey, preacher, word. I mean, I've, you know, I've, I was a slave to preacher once I started reading it. And uh, for my money, it's probably, as far as uh, long-running comics are concerned, it's the best. Uh, it's the best of all time at least one of them, because the two people, the one person specifically I'm going to talk about, um, because we all know that I have a long-standing love affair with, uh, um, with Ed Brubaker. Um, he's one of the few people to have retweeted me, uh, or directly, or, uh, direct messaged me on Twitter. Uh, so for that, I thank you, Ed. You're truly are a scholar and gentleman, um, and also one of the greatest comic writers. I mean, I, I've picked up all of his stuff from, you know, scene of, you know, from the scene of the crime to, you know, to Catwoman to, uh, Sleeper, which is another brilliant series. Uh, you know, obviously now, you know, Criminal Incognito, Captain America has worked there, uh, you know, Secret Avengers, the Marvel's project, which is something that got like zero fanfare and should have gotten a lot more because that was really, really incredible work. I mean, to, you know, it just kind of held to obscurity and that pisses me off because, you know, it was a, I, I thought it was a pretty significant event, you know, to kind of detailing the, uh, the beginnings of the Marvel Universe and it just really didn't get noticed which is really sad because he reteamed with uh, um, with Steve Epting who uh, was his uh, uh, which was his artist for a long time on Cap and of course not forgetting his run on uh, Daredevil which I think is actually superior to Bendis' run and quite possibly uh, superior at least in uh, consistency to maybe even uh, Frank Miller's uh, initial run as uh, writer-artist. 
But anyway, let's get to the guy I'm going to talk about. And that guy is the other writer, which I will get everything by. And that is Brian K. Vaughan. Brian K. Vaughan um, is very much... Uh, he's, he's just crazy. Um, he'll take the, you know, he'll take some really, you know, what might otherwise just be just way too out there and make, you know, a brilliant series out of it. Um, you now I have three of his books um, here that I'm going to show you. These basically the three titles that I read all of his, well, two of them are, okay, let's just start with this. This is Runaways. Okay, now Runaways holds kind of a special place in my heart because it's a very, very Whedon-esque book. Um, it was, you know, so, so Whedon-esque that uh, Joss Whedon himself uh, actually picked up the title after uh, Vaughn left it. And Vaughn himself has, you know, gone on to, you know, he uh, did probably the best of the Buffy season eight uh story arcs, which was the, uh, the Faith and uh, Giles arc. Um, and so, you know, right there, you know, if, if it's, you know, if it's the kind of good weedon -y goodness that we love, at least that I love, then, you know, I'm a sucker for it. And Runaways, you know, basically their parents, you know, they're, you know, they're these kids, you know, barely into their teens. Um, you know, one of them is just a little kid, even, and their parents are all super villains, um, and they decide to basically run away and and also to fight their parents. Uh, a group that calls them, <coughs> excuse me, a group that calls themselves the Pride, and uh, you know, and they you know kind of sort of team up with some different uh, characters along the way. They team up with the Avengers a little bit. Um, you know, Cloak and Dagger, they're also runaways, so, I mean, that was kind of a cool thing for, uh, for Brian to do. And, yeah, you'll, you'll see me with this a lot. I'm surprised you probably have seen me with it before. This is my bottle. It's my baba. It's my binky. Anyway, no, not a binky. A bottle. Baba. Oh, man. Jesus. Okay. Um, back on track here. Uh, but, you know, the character's extremely fleshed out. Um, it has, you know, one of the most kind of shocking and saddening deaths of, of a character. I'm not going to get into it. Again, go out and get all the books I'm going to talk about today. Go out, get them, start reading them. They're all A plus brilliant. Strangely enough, though, when Whedon actually took the book over, that's where it kind of started to careen off the rails. It started to get way, way too weird. Um, but you know, Joss, you know, he can be kind of hit and miss too. So, um, but uh, so Runaways, uh, you know, it's a product of Marvel comics, so um, it's, of course, changed hands a few times. Like I said, Joss wrote it for a little while, then uh, Terry Moore uh, of Echo, um, he went on to uh, kind of reboot it, uh, not reboot it, but just kind of continue it after it had been off the shelves for a little while. Um, so what we're going to do right now is we're going to pause for a few moments, and we're going to return with the next book, uh, which I think is the... Uh, is a tie with Preacher for the best long-running, uh, however finite, uh, series. And it has to do with a person with just one letter in their name that everybody knows. Be right back.